by transcription. Dr. Christian's office. The Vaseline Program, the only show in radio where the audience writes the script. Stories right from the heart of America. Written by the people of America, woven around that beloved American character, the family doctor. Tonight's prize winner is Sammy Hits the Jackpot by Winifred Bennett of Portland, Maine. Jean Herschold is starred as Dr. Christian with Rosemary DeCamp in the role of Judy Price. The opening scene takes place in Dr. Christian's familiar office. Judy is working at her desk as the door bursts open. Hi! Sammy Larcoma. I might have known. Nobody in River's End goes through a door like Sammy. Mm, and no one in River's End is as pretty as Judy, and I hope you get a run in your best nylon for picking on her. Ah. You know I always make like a steamroller when I got something on my mind, and today I got a problem. Oh, what's wrong now? Is the chocolate fountain down at the drugstore dry again? So you can't dish out any more of those horrible stomach busters? I'll have you know, Miss Price, my stomach busters are now billed as economic atomics. Oh. That's because a customer gets so much for his money. <laughs> he lives to order another? Mm, you'll be sorry. You wait till next year when I'm old enough to vote, and you'll get my vote as the young woman most likely to keep me from succeeding. <laughs> oh, hey, I almost forgot I said I had a problem. Oh, a pretty blonde one, I'll bet. Mm, not this time. Uh... Where's Dr. Christian? Oh, now look here, Sammy. Dr. Christian's much too busy with babies, fevers, oh, broken bones. Oh, I got something more pressing than a broken shank to share with Dr. Christian. All right. I give up. I never could hold up my end of the conversation with you. Okay, the doctor is in. Thanks, Judy. I thought I heard you coming, Sammy. Sit down. Thanks, Dr. Christian. I was the soda fountain business. Oh, five minutes. I could tell you my whole future is a soda squirt. Doctor, I got really big news. I got a chance to make a million dollars. Oh, well, congratulations. Well, not a million, of course, but thousands of dollars, and all I need is a fleet of logging trucks for 12 days. Is that all? I might as well dive right into the story. <clears throat> you know that uh, hemlock that Pa had bucked last winter? Well, if I can get it down into the river by the 18th, I can sew myself some bigger pockets, because I'll need them. Who wants to buy the logs, Sammy? The Androscoggin Mill. Oh, that would be a contract job then, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. Three and a quarter million feet into the drink by the 18th or bust. Well, that's a big responsibility, Sammy. What does your dad think about it? Oh, he's all for it. He can't get around to look after it himself, so he's kind of giving me the high sign. But you haven't got the trucks. Uh, that's your big problem, isn't it? Yeah, as I said, I'll need about six of the big fellas running all day. Should have a crawler tractor on hand for the bigger stuff, too. Paul will back me up on a contract, but furnishing wheels for the job is my business. And that's where you come in, Dr. Christian. <laughs> I wish I could write you out a prescription, Sammy. <laughs> I suppose you want a loading boom and all the rest of it thrown in. That's it. You got the idea, but where in the field of daisies can I get the hiring of all that equipment? What about Huck Skilling, the farm next to yours? Uh, he's got it all right, part of it anyway. But he's not letting me see it. He's got the logs, too, and he'd like to get that contract. But he hasn't got the roadway that'll hold up for such heavy logging. Wasn't uh, Skilling the one who tried to get hold of your father's right away? Mm-hmm. He swamped out a road that won't hold up, get spongy after a rain. So he tried to buy our lover's lane. Then he offered to lease it, and from then on he's been making threats. Well, he's not going to like you if you hold off this big deal. You'd better watch out for him. From what I hear, he's no cream puff. Well, he's not getting our road. We would have got our logs out over the snow last winter, but the snow was too deep for any equipment. Uh, your dad has done logging most all his life, hasn't he, Sammy? I guess he knows there's nothing glamorous about it. It's all hard work. Mm, bet you think I'm afraid of real work. Well, I'm not. I can look it right in the eye. Pa's thrived on it. Why shouldn't I? I can remember when your father came to River Sand. He came straight from Lithuania. And neither he nor your mother could speak a word of English. But he worked, built a house, bought more land, learned our language, and kept right on working. Oh, that's good enough for them. But me, I got to get started. I don't intend to be Haley's prize soda jerk all my life. I, I push a little valve here, a squirt, a little lever there, a squirt, and a beautiful career is wasted while I count scoops of vanilla. <laughs> don't think I'm ready for an examination between the years, Dr. Christian, but me, little old Sammy, is a guy who sometimes stands out by the old chestnut in our dooryard, and I swear I can hear voices saying, Sammy Larcoma, you can be anything you want to be in this country. Anything you want to be, anything. <laughs> then I guess I can push one of Pa's spar trees right over with my bare hand. I feel that good. I'm with you, Sammy. And I think I know someone or one Dexter who has all the equipment you'll need. She has her own drivers. She? Yes, uh, Lucy Andrews. Ever heard of her? 
Hardly. I don't know many women truck drivers. Oh, Lucy just owns the business. She has a regular drivers. Quite a crew of men she handles, and well, too. Lucy's a very smart girl. For an old girl, huh? Oh, I wouldn't say Lucy's so old. About, uh, 40? Oh, I think Lucy looks uh, younger than that. There are some people who actually say uh, Lucy's hazel eyes are beautiful and her red hair is something to make you look twice. Oh, fool me, Dr. Christian. For her sake, I hope she holds together long enough to see this job through. Bet she never handled anything so big as this. And I bet you're forgetting she hasn't taken the job yet. She's a very busy woman. But uh, if she's not already tied up, I think I'll... I think I'll see her that she does business with you. I'll tell you what, Sam. I'll get in touch with Lucy. And, uh, of course, the rest is up to you. Fair enough, Dr. Christian, and thanks. Boy, oh boy, can I just see Art still in space right now. Don't I look like I just had a blood transfusion? Ha! That's something you'll never need. Ha! Be seeing you, Julie. Ooh, practically busted our bell. <laughs> What's the matter, Judy? Bang, bang. Sammy Larcoma's like a flash flood. When he comes your way, you just can't escape him. <laughs> Good morning, soda jockey. I'd like a lemon and lime, please. Oh, now, look, chicken, I know I'm fresh, but I'm free and I'm almost 21 and my heart's not in my work, so don't call me a jockey. Uh, did you say lemon and lime? Yes, please. I can mix you the fanciest soda drink this side of heaven, try one. No. No? Okay, no. A small Coke square, bro. Well, if it ain't Hawk Skillin' talking to himself again. In town looking for a chip for your shoulder, Skillin'? Where's the Coke? Oh, thought you said Poke. Come on, come on. When I get through with me first customer, Mr. Skillin', then you shall be served in the style to which you would like to become accustomed. <laughs> uh, our uh, specialty today is the Sunset Glow Sunday. Would you like to try it, Sugarman? <laughs> <laughs> My mother told me John Gilbert was known as the great persuader in her day. Too bad he's not around now to give you a little competition. I'll try the special. Mm, come on right up. Ah, there she is. A work of art. Guaranteed to spoil your appetite for a week. Mmm, lurid color, isn't it? Mmm, good. Great from the hand of experience. I make hundreds of them and all of them good. Look, modest. I ordered a simple little Coke a while back. So you did. There you are, sir. Uh, would you like a little pinch of arsenic in it? Got some fresh in today. Uh. You from out of town, Miss, um, Miss, uh... Mm-hmm. Ah. Thought I knew all the chickens around here. From 12 to 20, that is. I'm sure you do. That's because you feed them so much corn, Larcoma. Ha, ha. Ha, Would you like a glass of water? On the house, of course, Mr. Skillen. Right in your face. Ha! What a coincidence. He closes the door about as loud as I do. Uh, going to be in town long? Just long enough for a little business. Oh, by the way, could you tell me where I can find Dr. Christian's office? Sure, know it well. Dr. Christian's a good friend of mine. Uh, when you're through with the soda, come on over to the door and I'll show you just how to get to his office. I'm through now. It was quite an experience, Mr., um... Sammy! Sammy Larcoma. A cute name. Oh, do you think so? Oh, what do you know? I never thought of it that way before. Um, uh, you're cute, too. I just hope Dr. Christian doesn't live too far away. Mm, that's right. I was going to show you, wasn't I? Uh, see that traffic blinker down the street? Mm, yes. Well, you go past there and keep right on down State Street. Dr. Christian's office is in the old White House. On the corner of State Street and the River Road. You knew where he lived all the time. I confess. I have been there before. Your eyes are hazel and they are a dreamboat. I hope that's good. Mm-hmm. And you could knock me over with a south wind. Your hair is the kind of red that's worth a second look. Lucy. <laughs> okay. Now you know. And I hope we're friends. I just dropped in to ask you, Sam, if you'll meet me at Dr. Christian's in half an hour. Yes, indeed. You didn't think I'd say no. Is everything all set now between you two? All set. What a conference. In all my years of doing business, <clears throat> I have never had such a pretty partner. <laughs> You're not fooling me. It's my trucks and tractors and logging arches you want. <laughs> oh, no man minds if a little beauty comes with a tractor, Lucy. <laughs> now, I think you should run out to your house, Sammy, and talk the final plans over with your father. I uh, think I'd like to go along, too. 
Haven't seen your dad for weeks. Good. I know just what Pa's going to say when he sees you, Lucy. Should I hear it? Mm, the nose, my, how cute it is. And don't let the nose fool you. No, don't. Lucy's been running this business for over a year now, isn't it, Lucy? Yes. Ever since Dad died and sort of left it in my lap. He also left some good men working for me. And they're still with me. I never saw Sammy so excited about anything before, Mr. Lacoma. No, and that we have not. Not since the time you fished the porcupine quills out of his legs, Doctor. Uh, Mama? Yes, Papa? Does it not make the heart warm to see our Sammy taking the hold on this job that is a man's work? Uh, you are right, Papa. Dr. Christian, every day Sammy gets more and more like his Papa. <laughs> he is, like you say, just a chip off the chopping block. And as uh, Judy, my secretary, would say, with all the enthusiasm of the axe. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, when I was a boy in my homeland... We did not have the, uh, what you might call easy time our boy has today. We worked 15, 16 hours a day for our daily bread. Who said anything about bread? I'm hungry. Hungry, Lucy? Oh, no. It's all said, folks. Lucy thinks the job will be a cinch, don't you, Lucy? I didn't want you to quote me on that, Sammy. I simply repeated what Harris, my top man, said. It can be done on time, barring accidents. Well, that is all the assurance we want, Miss Andrews. Did you see the spot trees up in the west section, Lucy? I always admire them. Oh, yes, they're magnificent. I think they're the tallest trees I've ever seen. Then my Sammy was creeping around in diapers. Those trees were the giant's den. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, yes, <laughs> Oh, it's nothing. A slip of the tongue only. I get a lunch for us now, huh? With or without an empty stomach, work can be done. But with a full stomach, it can be done all the better. <laughs> Looks like the road ain't there. Mm. Uh, it sure ain't here. Look, someone's been messing around with these road timbers. Sure have. See, put your foot down here. A hole big enough to take a wheel right off a truck. Uh, the timber's been hacked away and termites didn't do it. Yeah, but a good pickaxe could have done it. Just what I was thinking. Well, we got to get this fixed up quick. Hawk Skillen is not going to hold us up this way. The mother load's coming along behind me. They want to be getting out, too. You stay here. Don't leave the truck. I'm going back and get a couple of the men, and we'll set a new timber in here. Keep your eyes peeled. Okay. Hold up there, like Homer. You've got a nerve to show your feathered skull around here, Skillen. What do you want? <laughs> I came up to see you work. Hmm. You sure you didn't do a little work yourself? Ah, wouldn't that be just too bad? You know, I told you, old man, you could expect this. So you did do it. I don't know what you mean. But you better run and tell the little lady her trucks ain't gonna have no pretty road to run on. That's where you're wrong, Skillen. And that's where you come in. Now get up that hill and set your claws to working on that road. Come on. Funny boy. Why, you wool brain. I'll square your head off and throw it in your face before I repair roads for a Lacoma. Like my father always said, there's something that can be done when nothing can be done. So, now will you get going? Right. Oh. I didn't know you had a gun. I'll give you a minute, Skillen, to get up that hill. You'll be sorry for this, Lacoma. That's a new angle. Uh, this little sting, Sammy. Couldn't you look as if you came in contact with a food shovel? Yeah. <laughs> it's all carelessness on my part. I was making like I was tough as a drugstore steak, and wham, he let me have a pine bar right in the face. He's doing some fancy road repair now for the fellas, though. How'd you ever force him to do that? I <laughs> just made like I was Roy Rogers. I thought I had a shooter in my jacket pocket. When he found out I didn't, then he got brave. Well, I gotta get back up and stir up the ingredients for some fancy log hauling to make up for lost time. I hope I can get up there and see some of the excitement before you get through. Hope you can, Dr. Christian. Um, uh, seen Lucy this week? No, but uh, Judy got a call from her yesterday. Oh, now how is she? Judy's fine. Huh? Oh, that's good. I mean, how's Lucy? Lucy? Oh, I guess she's all right. Busy. All right. 
Lucy's this and that and so on and a lot of it. No, boy, I don't care who knows I said it. Oh, boy! Dr. Christian, and we're over the hump. Our work is done. Yes, and this is the time you want to watch out for trouble. <laughs> you said it. I uh, saw Lucy around here a few minutes ago. Looked to me as if she was uh, avoiding you. Mm, you didn't dream it. No matter how much I talk to her, we're not speaking. A little uh, temperament cut into your partnership? I don't know what you call it. When a girl tells me to go to Cucamonga just because I call her bunny face, girls are just plain hard to handle. Are you sure she didn't think you said funny face. Hey, maybe she did. I'll have to consider that on look for angle. Oh, there she is. Lucy? Hello, Dr. Christian. I could scarcely see you, Doctor, for the glamour around you. And you mean to say none of it dropped off on me? You don't need secondhand glamour, Dr. Christian. <clears throat> Dr. Christian, ask her if she knows we only got six more hours to make ourselves filthy rich, and does she think she can make the grade? You can tell him, Dr. Christian, that I am strictly a businesswoman, and business is good. And tell her, please, Doctor, that I'm no business machine, and I'm just holding my breath until this job is through, and that I'm young enough to make a few mistakes, socially, that is, and I'll never call anything but a bunny a bunny face again, and that I hope it didn't sound like funny face, and if it did, oh boy, I'm sorry, amen. <laughs> How can you assist him, Lucy? <laughs> That's it, who can? Bunny face, indeed. Hmm, you see, Dr. Christian, everything can be explained easy enough. Can it, Lucy? Yes, and let's hear you do it. Miss Andrews, Miss Andrews. What is it? What's the matter, Ed? It's the driver, three of them, up in the woods. They took like they've been poisoned. Uh, run to my car, Sammy, get my bag. Yes, sir. The rest of the men, are they all right? It appears like they are. Do they bring their lunches? Uh, yes, we all do, but uh, no one's had lunch yet. What about the drinking water? Do you bring that with them? No, no, we keep some jugs on here. All us men get the water from there. Here you are, Doctor. You're back. Thank you. Lead the way, Sammy. We'd better hurry. Are the men seriously ill, Dr. Christian? Oh, I wouldn't say so, Lucy. I believe they're just enough of some sort of poison in the system to make them very uncomfortable. But uh, you'd better get one of the trucks ready, Sammy. We might want to take the men to town for a treatment that I can't keep them here. Okay, Dr. Kisson. What can I do? Uh, stand by. Might want you to help me. Of course. Sammy, watch out around you. Don't take any chances. That man is ready to do anything now to stop us. All right, I'll be careful. Where's your drinking water? Oh, in those glass jugs over there. All right, don't let anyone touch them. I want a sample for analysis. <sighs> Isn't it a miracle that all the men didn't drink from that water? Oh, Dr. Christian, how are we ever going to get the rest of this stuff down to the river in time? We've just got a few hours left now, and I don't know where we'd ever find extra drivers on such short notice. You'll make it, Lucy. Don't worry now. Dr. Christian, Lucy. Coming. Ah, see what I see? Hawk Skilling. Yeah. Squatting down in the cab of this truck, tampering with the wires. I suppose, Mr. Skilling, you feel right at home, do you? Let me out of here. Got no chains on you, have you? I'd advise you to get out and stand on your feet. I have a few questions to ask you. You heard him. Get out. All right. But I ain't got no answers for any of your questions. I think you can answer this one. What did you put into the drinking water? What drinking water? And those jugs over there. Answer me. What did you do with it? That's for you to find out. We'll find out, and so will the sheriff. And I think I owe you something for trespassing, Mr. Skillen. Brave now, ain't you? When you got yourself all surrounded by friends. You've had this coming to you from way back, and I'm on my own. Oh, you're not. You... Oh, Dr. Christian, stop them. Oh, Sammy's all right. Look at him. Oh, stop kicking him, you big brute. Oh. Sammy, get up. Get up off your face. Sammy. I'll oh, oh. kick you, yellow. Oh. Strike. Oh. Oh. Ah. Enough, huh? Oh, Sammy, are you killed? Well, glad you didn't ask me that a minute ago. Whew. Boy, he almost got me. Temporarily. Yeah, your left eye could use a beefsteak. <laughs> oh, Sammy, you were magnificent. After you got up off your face. Yeah, you ought to pin me up against a wall for a feather-headed dope. I should have known he'd be sneaking around here again. No, I should have told the men to guard the water. It's my fault. No, there's no time to talk about who's to blame now. We have four men to hold the town. Now, is the truck ready? All ready. Let me hog tie this thing in the ground first. That's a rattle's all gone out of him. Looks like he could use some smelling salts. I think I could use some myself. Oh, uh, don't get excited now. Take all these indisposed men into town. Then watch out. Well, boss, I'm 
I'm ready. <laughs> you actually look eager to go, too. Ready, boss. So help me Uncle Hezzy and all his poor relations. I don't know why you two want to risk tearing off your arm muscles with these heavy babies. Strictly business with me, sir. I'd do anything to pull this trick out of the hat. Ah, with me, it's part pleasure. I always wanted to tussle one of these ten-ton babies around. <laughs> well, I can handle one, and you can too, Dr. Christian, but gee, it's different with you, Lucy. I'm afraid to let you try it. It's, well, it's not woman's work. Listen to that, will you? Hey, I was brought up in trucks like these. They're mine, remember? And I know they're mechanically perfect, so what's holding us up? Yes, let's go. Okay, here we come, Andrew Stoggin. to be you. Heard the news, honey? I mean, heard the news, Judy. Who hasn't heard? It's all over town how Dr. Christian and Lucy and you made yourselves the newest heroes of River's End. <laughs> and everybody's talking about how Dr. Christian threw his hat into the river when the last log was dumped in. Yeah, it was my best hat, too. <laughs> Dr. Christian, you're going to have the best hat this side of San Francisco. Uh, size seven and a half, please. <laughs> right oh. And oh, boy, Judy, did you hear about Lucy setting down that last load within a foot of the bank to save time and never blinking an eyelash? Heard it at least 20 times this morning. Oh. I just guess I hit the jackpot all around yesterday. Did you hear the rest of it? Was there more? Was there more, she asked, Sammy. Judy, that's when I threw my hat away. Oh. I knew nothing would ever be the same again around here. Well, I hate to brag, seeing as how I don't like big talk. No. But, Judy, half the blessed town was just standing around that riverbank when Lucy up and kissed me. So help me if I didn't act like a bucket of worms and reel right into the river and had to be fished out. <laughs> and then, then, she kissed me again. Ah, oh, well, that's what they meant when they were talking about the frying pan and the fire, yeah. you know? Now wait till you hear what happened last night. No, no, don't tell me. You didn't sign another contract. Sammy, say no. Mm-mm. Rest in peace, folks. I just wangled Lucy into going to a movie with me. Another famous first, you oh. see. And talk about being in luck. Guess what happened. They let you in for half fare. They gave you an Oscar for a fine performance. Oh, that little thing. Friends, I had the lucky number on my ticket stub and drew the jackpot prize. No! What did you get? 25 Sunset Glow Sundays at Haley's Drugstore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good omen. I hope you'll hit the jackpot with Lucy, too. And the curtain descends on another prize play with our star, Gene Hersholt, waiting to greet you. Thank you very much. The lighthearted story you just heard is the work of Mrs. Winifred Bennett, who lives in the state of Maine, and therefore knows her tall tempers. She's the mother of an 11-year-old daughter, and she writes, The Dr. Christian series is to be commended not only for opening new doors to unknown writers, but because it's one dramatic radio program that both parents and children can thoroughly enjoy together with never a fear of hearing anything objectionable. Well, as we say in the opening of this program every week, our stories are written by the people of America right out of the heart of America. Next week, we plan to present a new prize play called Two-Way Promise by Al Lane and Dave Platter of Los Angeles, California. We invite you all to join us again next Wednesday evening, same time and same station.